Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation D VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'll be trying out a really powerful and fun rain team featuring Basket Legion as well as Overquill. These are two brand new Pokemon 2 competitive VGC introduced through Legends Arceus, and they both get access to Swift Swim. The idea is that this Overquill has normal Terra with Choice Band and Self Destruct, so you can just blow things up super quickly with this and give yourself a huge lead. The Basque Legion, on the other hand, has Last Respects as well as Wave Crash and Aqua Jet with Life Orb, so you just deal massive amounts of damage, and there are so few Pokemon that can reliably take hits from this Pokemon, especially when the rain is set up. So Pelipper exists on this team to set up the rain. Those are two really powerful sweepers. And to round things out, you've got Champao, Dragonite, as well as Urshifu. Champao in particular is really nice on this team because it's so physically oriented, so dropping your opponent's defense to just really secure the knockout, especially with things like Self Destruct and Wave Crash, are super, super nice. So, this is easily one of my favorite teams I've tried out so far in Regulation D, and I'm excited to dive into it with you all. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down below. And thank you so much as always for joining me. If you enjoy, really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like on the video or subscribing to the channel, it really helps out a ton. Anyway, let's dive into things. Breaking things down, as always, Rental, Pace, and Team Creator are linked down in the description below. This Team Creator actually built the Cresselia Ursa Luna team that I started Regulation D with as well, so they've created easily, I think, some of the strongest early meta Regulation D teams that I've seen, so huge thank you to Wanda Lee for building and sharing these teams. And question of the day, with us using two Hisuian Pokemon, I want to know what Hisuian Pokemon you think is the best in the format right now, or maybe is a little bit underrated down in the comment section below. Now, the first Pokemon I want to talk about is Overquill. Before I saw this team, I legitimately knew nothing about this Pokemon, and I didn't really think it was something that would be viable in the format. But after playing with it for a little bit, I think it can be super, super powerful against the right teams. Now, the main thing to call out here is that you've got normal Terra with Choice Band and Self Destruct. So, you're able to literally blow things up and pick up big knockouts immediately. Self-Destruct, however, is a really risky move to use in VGC because Protect is so common, so if your opponent just ends up protecting in front of your Self-Destruct, that's obviously a huge risk. So, when using this Pokemon, you really have to analyze the likelihood of them carrying Protect and whether or not they'll use it on that specific turn. You also have the element of surprise going for you when you use Overquill, but naturally, as more people see this team, they will become more acclimated to expecting Self-Destruct, so keep that in mind. At the end of the day, though, this Pokemon is just so fast when you have Swift Swim up for it. It's also base 85, so it's already decently fast, but when the rain is set up for it, this thing can just outpace everything that doesn't have speed control on the opposing side, and it can just pick up big one-hit KOs. To round out the move side, you've got Gunk Shot, which gives you the same type of attack bonus, and this is just a really nice move since Grass Terra is still pretty common, especially given that this is a rain team. For example, Grass Terra Heatran is something you might run into, so being able to just Gunk Shot those Pokemon for super effective damage is really nice. Liquidation is just good, really, really good water coverage, especially with Pelipper setting up rain, and then Aqua Jet gives you priority as well to finish things off. So... Overquill just does a lot of damage, and I think when I had first seen this Pokemon, I was like, okay, does it really have that much of a punch to it? But Self-Destruct, Normal Terra, Choice Band, especially when you throw on Champao's Sword of Rune on top of that, it's just a ridiculous combination. Basque Legion is the other Swift Swim user on this team, and this Pokemon just does so much damage. You're using it primarily for Wave Crash in the early game, and Last Respects for the end game. Basque Legion is one of the most effective late game closers in the format because Last Respects damage output increases by 50 base power for every fainted party member. So, Wave Crash in general, especially with Rain, Water Terra, Life Orb, and Champao, can just deal so much damage. Even Pokemon that resist it still take so much damage, but Last Respects is like a really nice endgame closer, especially against those Pokemon that maybe are immune to water type attacks like Gastrodon, for example. So I often try to position Basque Legion in kind of the mid game. It can be a really strong lead if you think Wave Crash with Water Terra, Rain, and Life Orb just blows up everything, but I kind of often like bringing this in the mid game to end game where I can really start sweeping teams after dealing some good damage with everything else on the team. The natural partner for Basque Legion and Overquill obviously is Pelipper, which can set up the rain via Drizzle. You have Damproc here just to maximize the amount of turns of rain that you have, and things are pretty self-explanatory here. The one thing to call out is you don't have Hydro Pump, you instead have Wide Guard, and I think it makes a lot of sense on this team since Overquill and Basque Legion already have really powerful water type attacks, and Wide Guard just gives you more utility against all the spread moves that exist, such as Tornadus' Bleak Wind Storm, Fluttermane's Dazzling Gleam, Earthquake from things like Landers or Ursa Luna as well, so it's just good utility across the board. This Pelipper is also a little bit bulkier, no need for that much speed here because Pelipper's main 
goal is to just set up the rain for its partners. Once it sets up Tailwind, of course, you can outspeed things like base 100 Pokemon, but generally it's not as important for Pelipper to be moving before your opponent because it is so bulky to begin with. Champau is such a perfect Pokemon on this team because Overquill and Basculation are both physical attackers, so obviously being able to drop opposing defenses is really nice, and Overquill can self-destruct next to Champau if it goes Terra's, meaning that Champau just doesn't take any damage, which is really nice in particular as well. With this team, you don't always need to necessarily set up the rain. Basque Legion and Overquill are pretty decent in terms of base speed anyway. So I've had a fair amount of games where I just lead Overquill Champau or Basque Legion Champau and just try to take advantage of the defense drop and deal a lot of damage immediately. Basque Legion, even without Water Terror, like just with the defense drop and Life Orb, can do so much damage with Wave Crash. Finally, to round things out, you've got Dragonite. This is a Silk Scarf variant rather than Choice Band, and that's because you have Choice Band obviously on Overquill. In addition, this team has Dragon Tail on the Dragonite. Dragon Tail is a really important move to beat things that really try to set up on you, things that try to increase their defense. For example, something like Hisu and Gudra, which otherwise can give this team huge amounts of trouble. It's also invaluable into Trick Room setups, which can give this team a good amount of trouble as well. The main thing about Trick Room setups is you have to ask yourself whether or not you think you can actually safely get Dragon Tail off into whatever's Trick Rooming, because if they have something like an NDD, which can just redirect attacks away, obviously that can pose some problems. The final Pokemon is Water Urshifu. This is a pretty standard Choice Scarf set with a little bit of bulk invested onto it. It just does a lot of damage, obviously, especially with Rain, Water Terra, as well as being able to take advantage of Champ House Defense Drop. This is just easily one of the best Pokemon in the format right now. We've featured different variants of it as well already, and you should expect to see this everywhere. Funnily enough, in my experience, it's actually the Pokemon I bring the least with this team, just because I think the Rancor is so powerful, but there are some teams that are just not equipped to deal with Water or Shifu, and this thing can single-handedly win you games. I believe it should be Drain Punch over Rock Slide on the in-game version, but Rock Slide's an interesting move to consider for utility as well. So, in terms of ways to play with the team, I think I first ask myself, how good is the Rain Trio? Because often I will just go Pelipper, Basque Legion, Overquill. I think with Overquill, you can lead Pelipper, Overquill, just protect normal Terra self-destruct. You can go Overquill, Champau, and protect self-destruct or Ghost Terra self-destruct. You can even go Overquill, Basque Legion immediately, but I often try to like to set up the Rain before I have these two out on the field simultaneously. So Pelipper is an effective lead, especially if they don't have great way to control the weather or speed, because Pelipper can also set up Tailwind, then just further out increasing the speed of everything on this team. That's that's particularly valuable against opposing teams with Tailwind. But Pelipper is an effectively Champau Dragonite's obviously really good. You could go Champau Overquill, Champau Basque Legion, Pelipper, Urshifu, Urshifu Champau. Quite frankly, so many different combinations of leads work with this team. The main thing you have to consider is how do I gain a huge advantage with my lead? Because with this team, you can't switch out very easily. So even though there's so many different combinations, you'll want to ask yourself what you think is the absolute best one that your opponent has few responses to. So yeah. That's it for a quick breakdown, now let's highlight some weaknesses. In terms of weaknesses, naturally with this team being a pseudo rain team, if you have ways to change the weather, that can be really beneficial, especially something like manual sunny day, which I've seen from things like Tornadus and even Murkrow, that can be pretty scary for this team. Also, this team is just a hyper offense team, and I was talking about that earlier, but it doesn't have the ability to switch out very easily, so if you are able to have a really strong lead, you can often put this team in a pretty tricky position. Honestly, even knowing the sets on Dragonite and Overquill alone, I think, can give you a pretty big advantage. Knowing about the self-destruct alone is obviously very beneficial because it just makes you think about protecting more in front of Overquill, and then even just protecting to see what move it locks itself into is a really big deal, right? Because once it commits to one of the moves, I mean, if it's self-destructing, you protect in front of it, it's a disaster for Overquill, but even knowing, hey, you can only click Gunk Shot or Liquidation, I think can be beneficial as well. Another thing to think about here is that the Basque Legion's Terra is water, so if you have a really strong electric Pokemon or grass Pokemon, especially like a Terra into Terra Blast, that can catch this Basque Legion off guard, right? Like, maybe resist with the grass type attack and then retaliate back with the Terra Blast, for example, or just powerful Pokemon with grass and electric type attacks. And I think because this team is really fast, if you're able to successfully set up Trick Room against this team, it can be really scary, so uh, Trick Room, I think, is a matchup that you have to navigate with with this team, but it certainly has answers, right? For example, Dragonite can Dragon Tail out, Overquill can just self-destruct in front of Trick Room setups, for example, and you do have Protect on some of the Pokemon like Champal, Basculation, and Pelipper, so you can slowly stall out the Trick Room, but I, that is one of the matchups I am a little bit more scared of when I see in Team Preview, just because if you are unable to deny the Trick Room and they just get a Sweeper out immediately, they can very quickly snowball and KO everything quickly. 
One last thing I'll call it is that this team is so reliant on physical Pokemon, it only has one special move in the Hurricane. So Pokemon that are very physically defensive can cause this team some trouble, especially if you're able to tank attacks and then retaliate back with more damage and disrupt, that can be a huge problem. So yeah, even just things like Intimidate or Reflect obviously can slow down the damage output of this team as well. But yeah, that's it for a couple of weaknesses. Okay, we have a Trick Room team here, Entity Armor Rouge, a Rangaroo Torkoal, which just won the North American International Championships in the Juniors Division. And then the Enamorous, which I haven't really had that much experience fighting against, as well as the Big Bear. Honestly, I think this could totally be an explosion game. Like, I could lead Chien Pao, normal Terra, just Explosion, Ice Spinner, turn one, and just blow things up. If you're my opponent and you want to set up Trick Room, your best bet is NDD Orangaroo or NDD Armor Rouge. Pelipper for Rain Control is decent here, just so that Torkoal doesn't sweep me. Dragonite's going to have a little bit of trouble clicking Extreme Speed if NDD has set up Psychic Terrain. So, I think I'm going to go with Pelipper and Basket Legion in the back. But I am really hoping we can just blow things up with self-destruct right now. That would make me so happy on turn one. It's obviously a high variance strategy because if our opponent just like protects in front of us, that can be pretty scary. One of the questions then is, out of all your Trick Room users, do you even carry protect? But it's NDD and Armor Rouge as the lead, okay. So, with this, Psychic Seed on NED, that's not really too surprising. Yeah, I would love to just normal Terra self-destruct here. The question is, like, they probably just go for follow me anyway, so does it make sense to attack with Chien Pao here? I would think no. Let's just self-destruct here and protect turn one. If they double protect, obviously, I might be in some trouble, but it's actually going to be armor switching out, okay? Into Enamorous, so that's basically a guaranteed KO at this point. I was hoping they would just go for Follow Me plus Trick Room here. I thought that was actually a pretty safe play for them to make, so honestly, I think this switch is better for them. But now we get Normal Terra, Choice Band, Boosted, Self-Destruct. Shampao protects. Here's the big question, does NDD protect? It does not, so we get self-destruct off, nice. Normal Terra, Choice Ban, and the defense draw from Champau here. And that is a double KO, beautiful. So what can my opponent have in the back? Torkoal, Armor Rouge, Ursa Luna. I think right now, I just bring out Basky Legion. Because I want to switch in Pelipper. Given that I already have a Pokemon lead, if Torkoal's their final Pokemon, then I can just immediately switch into Pelipper and then set up the rain. There's Basky Legion, and it's Torkoal. Perfect. So, in this position, I think Trick Room is the main thing we have to be worried about, right? And I think Armor Rouge going for a potential Grass Terra here certainly makes some sense as well. Now, the main thing is we're pretty bulky here with Basky Legion, right? I don't expect to faint from one attack from Torkoal. And then Shampao is Focus Sash as well. So what I'm actually willing to do is to just go for Last Respects onto Armor Rouge. Last Respects as well as Ice Spinner. If you go for Terra, then we cover for the Terra, and Torkoal protects here. Brilliant. And Ice Spinner also gets rid of Psychic Terrain. So, yeah, I think, like, Trick Room can be a really scary matchup for this team, but I figured we'd have some pretty big surprises to catch my opponent off guard. So, honestly, even if they survive this last respect, I think we probably just win the game at this point anyway, but that's enough for a KO. Yeah. And the thing is, by going for uh, Ice Spinner there, it covers for a defensive Terra on Armor Rouge. And the main thing to consider there is what's the worst case scenario? Armor Rouge protects and then Torkoal goes for an attack? Well, that's totally fine still, right? So now I can just wave crash and switch into Pelipper. Yeah. So that is the power of Overquill. It can just start off the game with a huge double knockout and 
in this matchup, I thought it was perfect for it because they didn't really have any ways to deny the self-destruct on turn one. No fake out pressure, for example, nor did they have any Pokemon that could really resist it super well. So if you're able to get a single good self-destruct off with this Pokemon, it can just blow the game wide open. And I think the main thing I had going for me in this matchup was that my opponent's team was relatively slow. So I figured that it would be pretty difficult for them to deny self-destruct. And like I said, the main way they could have gotten around it was just by protecting immediately at the start of the battle. So we're lucky that that didn't come out. But yeah, I mean, part of the thing is when you're going up against Overquill, do you really know what it is going to do? And I think self-destruct is a really interesting strategy on it in particular. And back in the old days of VGC, like explosion and self-destruct were actually used, especially in like 2008, 2009, 2010. And afterwards, we didn't see it as frequently. But I think on this team, there's just so much natural synergy because it allows you to increase your power of last respects immediately after you faint. So, yeah. All right, let's see what we got for this one here. It's another Trick Room oriented team. Wow. Hard Trick Room looks pretty common right now. Interesting. Into the Armor Rouge again. Hariyama Torkoal Bronzong and the Slowking. I'm a little bit worried about NDD plus Bronzong as the lead for my opponent. If you go with that, then I can't really deny you Trick Room. Yeah, I straight up can't deny Trick Room, I think, if they lead that. Hmm. Do I go with the same four Pokemon? I think that's fine. I also think there's a world in which my opponent leads, like, Hariyama plus Bronzong, to which then I could actually go Chimpao plus Basque Legion. Ghost Terra this. Yeah, this one's a lot harder because they have Fake Out plus something that resists the self-destruct. I think I want to lead Basque Legion here instead. Basque Legion, Champau. Overcool in the back and Pelipper. I do think Dragonite does make some sense in this battle. Even just a single extreme speed into Torkoal to reduce the damage output of Eruption is pretty valuable. But I think Bronzong here, plus either NDD or Hariyama support, makes it a lot harder to deny Trick Room. So we'll see. But they do, do just go with Arm Rouge NDD. Okay. Hmm, so here, like, you would expect normally NDD to follow me and then the Armourous to just set up Trick Room. What I could do here is just Ice Spinner plus um, Wave Crash. It could also be Armourous just protecting an NDD Trick Rooming, which would suck. Follow me, Trick Room is by far their safe, safest play. I am going to double up onto NED here, I think, because I think there's a world in which Armourish protects. Oh, wow. Neither... No Follow Me, interesting, or a Terra. So both Pokemon kind of just attacked, which... Oh, this is really good for us. Okay, they end up clicking Armor Cannon rather than Trick Room there. So, I'll knock out NDD here. And that means Trick Room does not get set up for my opponent on turn one. And what this also means is now I can just potentially switch out the Chien Pao and start sweeping with Basket Legion. I wonder if my opponent was worried about Basket Legion being, like, super slow. But I don't know. I feel like Follow Me Trick Room is still pretty safe there. Unless Armors didn't have Trick Room. But that's a good start for us, for sure. I really thought Bronzong would come out here, though. Uh, I think Bronzong's really good into our team. They bring out Hariyama. Okay. Well, you can't click Fake Out into this. I'm kind of down to just send it here, like Wave Crash into Arm Rouge, and then switch out into Pelipper. But I also think there's a world in which, like, this goes for a Terra, 
and then Trick Rooms. And I think we absolutely cannot let Trick Room go up right now. So actually, I would prefer to just Wave Crash here. And even though Ghost Terra seems kind of wild right now, I really don't want Armourouge to like Grass Terra. Because like, Trick Room going up is a disaster for this team. So I'm actually going to Ghost Terra here to get around a potential Fake Out and just straight up double up onto Armourouge. And the reason I'm willing to do this is because if we KO Armourouge, even if I end up like one Pokemon ends up getting knocked out here, I think it's fine. Trick Room is just so bad for us to run into, so I really don't want that going up. And here is the Terra from the other end. Yep. I would expect Grass Terra Armourouge here, but let's see. Yeah, this is exactly why I made this play. Bingo. Because I think the even though we had a pretty strong turn one, I could easily lose this game if I let my opponent set up Trick Room. So this is exactly why I led Basque Legion plus Champ how to begin with, knowing that I have Ghost Terra. So yeah. There's Ice Spinner. That's a one-hit KO. And that should just be game over at this point. We get a huge wave crash into the uh, Hariyama slot as well. We're up 4-2. Presumably their last one is Torkoal. I just switch in Palipper, and then we're good. So Trick Room is a really scary matchup for this team, but you can see that we do have responses to it. As that just gets a one-hit knockout. Oh my goodness. No rain necessary, no Terra necessary. Just the life orb and the defense drop from Shampao alone is enough. And Torkoal's the last one. Perfect. So yeah, I think in this game, if my opponent did have Trick Room and Armor Rouge, follow me, Trick Room would have just been better for them. I think we were still in a potentially okay position because I would have gotten rid of Terrain. I would have been able to switch in Pelipper. So then Basque Legion yeah, actually just does so much damage. But yeah, the game ended up being a lot easier because on turn one, they didn't set up Trick Room. So that's one of the downsides of using a really hardcore Trick Room team is if you get one turn wrong, especially in the early game, it can be really difficult to come back afterwards. And for a lot of these teams, if you don't set up Trick Room successfully, then you often will just lose the battle since the team's relying on such slow Pokemon. So now I can just switch in the Pelipper, change the weather, and then KO Torkoal. So the main thing for me in this game is I mixed up the lead, right? Like in the previous battle, I also went up against a Trick Room team, but this uh, team had Bronzong, and I felt like the Overquill was just really bad into a Bronzong lead. So I wanted to make sure I had appropriate answers into other things. It was a little bit sad to see Entity Armourish because then the Overquill Jam Pal combo would have just worked out really, really well. Like, Protect Self Destruct uh, kind of just blows things up immediately. But yeah, I do think that these matchups can still be really scary because if Trick Room does successfully just go up, then we have a really big uphill battle to fight. But the upside is having Pelipper to at least mitigate the damage output of Torkoal and then Basque Legion being a pretty bulky Pokemon in itself as well. What do we got here? Okay, this is definitely relevant. It is the Cleaver team that I had used on this channel. So if you want to see me play with the team my opponent's using, check out the video down in the description below. Hmm. I am not going to lie. I am intrigued by Pelipper plus the Overquill. I think if you're my opponent, though, you can just go Tornadus Urshifu. Yeah, Torn Urshifu is pretty scary here, right? Hmm. They should definitely go a Tornadus here. Oh, but you know what? I think I just set up Tailwind with my own Pelipper, honestly. Yeah, hold on. I think we can just go like Tornado, uh, sorry, Pelipper plus Basque Legion. Just set up the rain and start wave crashing immediately. Overquill in the back. Definitely don't want to bring Urshifu knowing their Cleaver set. Dragonite or Champau. I think I'll just bring Champau here. It's so strong. So the idea here is we are going to be faster in the beginning of the battle because of rain plus the swift swim. My opponent has Tornadus, so that can obviously set up Tailwind. But if you spend a turn clicking Tailwind with Tornadus, it means that you're not clicking Taunt onto Pelipper, meaning that Pelipper can then just go for a Tailwind of its own. It's Tornadus and Cleaver. Okay, works for me. I guess what's interesting about this position is I think Cleaver going for Stone Axe onto Pelipper feels really likely. So what I can actually do here is go for a defensive Terra and Tailwind. Wow. 
while wave crashing into Tornadus. If you're my opponent, you, uh, a really good play here is actually protect Tornadus, Terra Cleaver, and then target Basket Legion. Yeah, that would be a really powerful play. But I, I think I'm fine going for this. Tailwind and then just Wave Crash. In an ideal world, they go Tailwind with Tornadus and then Stone Axe into Pelipper. I think if that happens, I am in such a good position on turn one. But yeah, my strategy in this game was make sure that I am able to just set up Tailwind and match their Tailwind. Okay, perfect. So they just go for their own Tailwind. No Terror Protects here. Stone Axe. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Okay, I'm super happy about that turn. Because now I match your Tailwind, meaning that Basque Legion just outpaces everything. And I have the Overquill waiting in the back as well. Excellent. So this is exactly what I was going for. Wave Crash KO's Torn here. Take a lot of recoil, but that's fine. One thing to note here is also that the cleaver on the opposing end can't protect, but obviously it can go for quick guard or feint. So I gotta be a little bit careful about that. The stealth rocks going up actually is a pretty major problem for Chien Pao. And this is why cleaver is so good, right? Chien Pao Dragonite are both everywhere in the format, having a way to just kind of break through their respective um Break through their respective multi-scale and focus sash is really valuable. So Chien Pao comes out, and Chien Pao can obviously sucker punch into us here. It could also just Sacred Sword into Pelipper. I've got this Choice Band Self-Destruct waiting in the back. I think I would prefer to click Hurricane here into Chien Pao and then Protect. But I could see Sacred Sword just being launched into that slot. Oh, but it's fine. Okay, yeah. Because if I go for this and then they KO the Pelipper, I just get Overquill and then I just Aqua Jet Self-Destruct. Okay, good protect from Champau there. Oh, this is a modified version of the team. They actually had Night Slash on Cleaver. Okay. That's cool. Man, they're not going for a Terra here, so like, I kind of want to just punish them and click Aqua Jet. I definitely should be clicking Aqua Jet this turn. Yeah, I want to Hurricane into Chien Pao and Aqua Jet into Cleaver. I feel like they just haven't been respecting the super effective attack into that slot. So maybe they do Terra this turn, but I felt like it was kind of greedy to not Terra the previous two turns. And yeah, they're not going to Terra again. <laughs> That's just a one-hit KO. <laughs> so it was Rocky Helmet, but yeah, I think they probably just kept thinking I was going to play around a defensive Terra from Cleaver. Which is fair. Nice Sacred Sword here. But this is fine. Now I get out Overquill. I think the question with Overquill is do I actually want to click Self-Destruct? Because obviously they can protect. Fluttermane might also be their last Pokemon. Dragonite. Uh, Dragonite with E speed here is scary for sure. It's the last turn of Tailwind. I expect this to be Choice Banded. I could see them saving normal Terra for it as well. If you E-speed, then you lock yourself into it. That's a problem. Yeah, this is actually still a pretty tricky position to be in, I think. Um, I kind of want to just self-destruct here and protect. Okay. The problem is I think they just go for E-Speed onto the Overquill slot. Yeah, this was honestly a really well-conserved late game. Oh, wait, it's Steel Terra. That is interesting, okay. 
In my ideal world, Champel doesn't protect here. Either. Nice! Okay, we get self-destruct off. Oh, that's so huge. Because that breaks multi-skill. And now, I can just Aqua Jet Champau, bring out my Champau, and then just Sacred Sword their Dragonite. Yep, so they're sashed here. They spin her into us. And this is why I was prioritizing setting up Tailwind so much throughout this game. And they click Outrage. Okay, beautiful. Now I know I, I don't even have to be worried about an extreme speed from that slot. Uh, Outrage was a good choice, though, I think, in the sense that it would, uh... <sighs> you're not Choice Scarf. Yeah, you're slower than Champau. The one thing I was worried about is if it ends up being Scarf uh, Outrage, I protect. Sorry, they protect their Champau. I Aqua Jet into it, and then Scarf Outrage targets here. But I think we've locked our opponent now. Because we still have four turns of rain, so Aqua Jet's higher priority against Champau. So I can just Sacred Sword into Dragonite, and then Aqua Jet into Champau. I guess the fear here is if um, Sacred Sword doesn't KO Dragonite, but super effective and has the defense drops. I would expect it to, but if I wanted to guarantee the KO, I could have doubled up on a Dragonite there. Oh, that's interesting. I've actually never seen that interaction before. Yeah, like because Outrage didn't successfully go off, they can actually change their move. That's cool. Okay. I guess the other thing is because I'm so used to seeing Choice Band Outrage, right? Yeah. But either way, E-Speed isn't enough to KO us here, so now it's the 2v1. Just Ice Spinner and Aqua Jet. So, this is honestly a pretty spooky game. I think, like, if it were just normal Terra Dragonite with Choice Band Extreme Speed, I would have potentially been in a really tough spot. Because if they had that and then they just target down the Overquill slot, that just feints potentially. I bring out Champau, but then Champau's Focus Ash is broken because of Cleaver setting up that Stealth Rock. So, it's actually a really volatile matchup. And even though I felt like I was in a really good spot after turn one, things were still kind of spooky. But, yeah, so far, Self Destruct has been absolutely incredible, getting us so much value in the games that we brought it out in. And the uh, Basque Legion has just been putting in so much work as well. So, yeah, the hyper offense just kind of continues right now. I think the other interesting thing in this game was the decision to not Terra Cleaver. But given that my opponent went like two turns in front of a Basque Legion and didn't Terra either turn, I was like, okay, that's why on that third turn, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to Aqua Jet you because you, you're playing in a way to make me think like you're just not really respecting me KOing you. And they probably wanted to conserve their Terra for that Dragonite in particular. So, yeah. But... Otherwise, I think as soon as Steel Terra came out, even though it meant let self destruct did less damage, it then means Sacred Sword hits you for super effective. So, yeah. Okay, we've got Tornadus, Urshifu, Chimpao Dragonite, Heatran, Zapdos. I think I want to take a similar approach to the previous game. My problem here is I think Tornadus, Zapdos is a really good lead for my opponent. I guess I could just always Terra Pelipper to get around that, though, right? I think my own Dragonite could be really valuable here. You know, I think Dragonite's really interesting because if you're my opponent, what's the likelihood of you actually bringing out Heatran? Probably pretty slim. And if you're not bringing out Heatran, it means I can honestly just click Outrage or Extreme Speed. I don't want to bring Pelipper in this one, I think. Sorry, I don't want to bring Urshifu in this one. It could just be Champau Dragonite. It's just they don't really have water resistances or immunity, so I'm thinking if Pelipper sets up Tailwind early, we can really get going. I'm actually thinking something like Pelipper plus Champau here, because Champau's really good into Torn Zapdos, and then the double waters in the back. I just wonder if it's a mistake to leave Dragonite out in this battle. I do think Dragonite's quite good here. Alright, let's try this out. Basically, if my opponent leads Tornadus plus Zapdos, turn 1 I can just Ice Spinner either of the Pokemon, steal Terra Pelipper, and then set up Tailwind. And then once we set up Tailwind and match their Tailwind, it means that the water Pokemon in the back are just super set up for success, right? Because, like, my opponent's team is really hyper-offensive as well. 
their goal is to just outpace us, but if I can outpace them and move before they do, it puts them in a really tough spot. It's Chimp, how's Aptos? Hmm. Uh... This is a really interesting position. Because, like, I could, for example, protect here and then switch out. I could steal Terra and just Tailwind immediately. Zapdos going for a Terra here certainly makes some sense to me. I think I kind of want to just go for Protect Sacred Sword turn one. I think double protecting was also okay. The problem with double protecting is then Pelipper is really vulnerable to subsequent turn. So I really expect them to lead Tornadus. Nice job on their end to not do that. This is a position where if I led like Pelipper plus Overquill, I think we would have been in a nicer spot. But here's the Terra. Who is it going to be on? It's going to be Zapdos. Good. Steel Terra Zapdos. Okay. Uh, it's actually a pretty big problem for me because I can't self-destruct now easily into you. Pelipper protects. They sacred sword into me. Oh. Presumably they're sashed as well, right? Them not being sashed would be so nice for us, but yeah, it is sashed. I think sash is just the best item by far in Champau. It's gonna be thunder. Okay. Hmm. So. With it being a speed tie, like, I do think I can just go for Terra here, Tailwind, and Sucker Punch. The reason to Sucker Punch here is because in the off chance they try to double up onto Pelipper while I protect. That would be really bad. I mean, what's the likelihood of that, though, right? Hmm. Okay, I'm actually going to Terra Protect. If they make the play I was talking about, it's going to be super rough for me, though. But I was just thinking in this spot, if I manage to get Tailwind up successfully and I have a faster Champau going into next turn, we put on so much pressure. But yeah, I think in retrospect, I still like just clicking Sucker Punch more here. My Champau Protects. Okay, they do just Sucker Punch, but I don't know. That, that play was a little bit risky on my end, in my opinion. Here's Thunder. Nice, we survive. Uh oh full para here is going to be so bad for me. Okay, no full para. Good. This turn is interesting, um, because me Sucker Punching this is fairly obvious. So it's a question of whether or not my opponent lets me get it off. Because I could, like, let's say they protect. I could just hur Hurricane Sacred Sword this slot. But I also think there's a world where they just Sucker Punch here and then Thunder into here. So I think I'm just going to Hurricane Zapdos, play it safe, Sucker Punch into Champau. This sort is kind of frustrating, I think, in the sense that if I were able to, like, read into Champau Protecting and double up on Zapdos and KO it, it gives me such a huge lead. But, yeah, they're just going to attack. Good. I just didn't think that risk was worth it. I think, like, if I let them pick up two knockouts while not getting any KOs in return, that's really rough. So, they're going to Hurricane me for a KO. That's fine. I think the main thing to consider right now is self-destruct is not nearly as valuable. Get parried, which is a little unfortunate, but it's fine. Who do I want to go into? I think Basky Legion's probably the stronger pick. It's kind of awkward right now because I want Pelipper to faint. Like, if I switched it out last turn, that would have been stronger, but I really didn't want a Thunder going into that slot and just getting a free attack off, right? Dragonite comes out. Okay. I mean, with that, I think just Hurricane into Dragonite here. 
And then Wave Crash into Zapdos is pretty strong. My fear right now is that I'm going to take so much recoil. But the upside is that we do wall Dragonite because of the ghost typing. So they can't extreme speed us. And also you can't Terra. Okay, they just Aqua Jet Pelipper. That's fine. If we're trading one for one here, that's totally worth it for me. Life 4 Brain Boosted Wave Crash into Zapdos. Nice. Rocky Helmet. Static was the one thing that I was worried about. Getting Parrot here would be pretty annoying, but Zapdos is going to fame. It's really interesting they didn't prioritize Tornadus in this game. I actually think that's really smart for them. Okay, so <laughs> we ended up losing basically two-thirds of our health from that one attack, but kind of felt like I needed to do it. What's your last one? Heatran! Whoa, they actually brought Heatran into a rain matchup. I did not expect that. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I'm definitely locking into Salt Liquidation here. I just don't know the Dragonite moveset, and the problem is either of these could actually have ground-type attacks. I'm worried about, like, protecting Basky Legion, targeting this, and then they, like, go for a ground-type attack. I don't know if this is the right play. I wanted to double up on Dragonite. I actually think doubling on Dragonite was the move. Yeah, because it's like Dragonite so rarely carries Protect, whereas Heatran's much more likely to have Protect there. Okay, but they just Aqua Jet. If they're Aqua Jetting, that honestly makes me think their Choice Band locked into it. Given that, then I think we should be in a fine spot. I just can't believe Heatran was the last. Like, Heatran into a rain matchup is definitely not what I was expecting here. But I can just Liquidation now into Heatran. I don't think Aqua Jet KOs Basket Legion here, so I'm just going to last Respects. Focus Sash was already revealed on Champ House, so unless you have the Water Resist Berry here, it should just be a KO onto Heatran. I would expect it to be Banded D-Knight. Yeah, that doesn't KO. Beautiful. So, Liquidation here gets the one-hit knockout onto Heatran. Yeah, honestly, I honestly think any Pokemon other than Heatran would have been better for my opponent. I'm really surprised they brought it into a matchup with three water types and Pelipper, the Basque Legion, as well as the... Oh my gosh! Oh my... Was that through Motai skill? I'm really not sure. But yeah, I think like either Urshifu or Torn in the back would have been better for my opponent. Oops, Liquidation locked here. But we've got Aqua Jet here, so that'll just be a KO. And that's the thing, with Basque Legion, you don't always have to bring it out and solely click Self-Destruct. Like, this thing also does just do a lot of damage with Liquidation in the rain. Self-Destruct is really nice, but in this game, we weren't really in a good position to go for Self-Destruct because they had Steel Terra, Dragonite. Sorry, not Dragonite. Steel Terra on Zapdos, plus I had to respect Multi-Skill on the Dragonite. So, like, why not just go for Liquidation, which does so much more damage consistently across the board. So... Yeah, I think, like, my game plan in this battle was set up Tailwind to match their Tailwind, but they ended up not bringing Tornadus. I think their lead was honestly really powerful. It was also interesting, now that I think about it, that they were going for Thunder on Zapdos. That makes me think that their Tornadus probably has Rain Dance, because otherwise, Thunder is just not a very consistent move, because it can miss so frequently outside of Rain. But if they had Urshifu over Heatran in that endgame, I think it would have been a lot tougher. But because they had Heatran, like, that slot was just, like one attack away from getting knocked out from either of my Pokemon. And yeah, given that Dragonite looked like it committed to Aqua Jet, I think things were also trickier. If they had clicked something like an Aerial Waste or an Outrage, I think things could have been a little bit trickier for me as well. But yeah, I, I can see why they didn't want to click Extreme Speed, because if you lock into E-Speed and you're up against Basket Legion in the endgame, Basket Legion just completely walls you. So yeah. Okay... We've got, ooh, Murkrow. Murkrow scares me because of the pressure of potential Sunny Day. It's really cool to see Ursa Luna here, because I think, like, early meta, everyone's like, oh, you just pair Ursa Luna with Cresselia, and obviously that is a good duo. I had tried that recently. That was the very first regulation D strategy that I'd utilized, but 
I think that there's a lot of depth to Ursa Luna that is still underexplored. So my my problem here is just Murkrow in general, right? Because that can Tailwind. I just haven't brought Urshifu out at all today. Dragonite is compelling to me here, but I don't know. I've used the Rain Core so much today. It, sh it just feels so strong. And because we've gone up against so much Tailwind, it feels even stronger. Yeah, I'm honestly thinking Champao Pelipper again. Basculegion Overquill in the back. I think there's a pretty good case for Dragonite here because of their Rillaboom, which I would almost always expect them to bring. But we still have answers to Rillaboom, right? Like three of the four hit it for super effective, and Basque Legion, if I have it in the end game of Last Respects, is also pretty killer. So, yeah, I think I just keep prioritizing the water types here just because, like, when they have Rain and Tailwind up, we just outpace our opponent. But I do think I can see myself losing this battle from Murkrow having Sunny Day as well as Tailwind, and then they're able to just Sunny Day and get rid of my weather. Especially because I can't switch out very easily with this team. I wonder if Overquilt was actually just the right lead here. Like, what do I think my opponent can lead? I don't know, Rillaboom plus anything? Rillaboom just pressures Fake Out immediately. I think Murkrow in itself is a really strong lead. We're staring down the black screen. I'm wondering what's going on right now. Okay. <laughs> Took a little bit longer than normal to get into the battle. Rillaboom and Fluttermane. Huh. Mm. I think double protecting turn one here is probably okay. The other play I'm thinking about is just Ghost Terra here, so you can't fake out into this slot and then just straight up Ice Spinner. I'm low-key a little bit worried that it's Trick Room on Fluttermane here as well. Like, super bulky Trick Room. And I guess I don't necessarily need Tailwind here immediately. So, I actually think I'm going to, yeah, Ghost Terra. Ice Spinner, which also gets rid of Terrain. And just Hurricane here. I think there's a world in which my opponent has Trick Room on Flutter and they click Fake Out onto Cham Pao and then set up Trick Room. I think maybe I'm over-respecting Trick Room a little bit too much here, but I do think Trick Room is that bad of a matchup for this team that I want to respect it that much. Because if it goes up, I with having my two Water types in the back, it's just a complete disaster. But they go for Fake Out onto Pelipper. Okay, nicely done. And Flutter is bulky enough to survive. Yeah, that was like the dream scenario. Is it Trick Room? Yeah. See, I told you. I had no way around that, though, given that my opponent made the optimal play of targeting Pelipper. So really well done there. Okay. The upside is there's no more terrain, and I, Pelipper should outspeed this under Trick Room. So I actually think we can just Ice Spinner into Rillaboom. And then Hurricane into Flutter. But this is exactly what I was worried about. Now we have to weather the storm of Trick Room. In the first two games today, my opponents weren't really able to set it up, but this is pretty scary. You might be wondering, why in the world were you worried about Trick Room on Fluttermane? Well, they have an Ursa Luna on their team, right? And Ursa Luna obviously just synergizes really nicely with Trick Room. This is interesting. They're actually just going to let me... Okay, I suspect it's U-Turn coming out from Rillaboom if they're letting me make this play. Oh, it's not. Wow, okay. Uh, if this is a double KO, then things might not be terrible for us. Okay, not bad. The problem is both of these Pokemon are so low in terms of health now, and I have two Swift Swimmers in the back, and still so many turns of trigger to stall out. This next turn I can obviously just double protect, but I might just get swept under Trick Room right now. It's Ursa Luna and Heatran. Uh, it's just probably Water Terra, you would think, right? So there's three turns of Trick Rooms. I can double protect this turn, sack both Pokemon, and then protect again.
Palipur does have the opportunity to actually go for something like a Hurricane right now. I don't necessarily need to protect because Heatran should be walled. And I don't think Ursaloon actually KOs us. So I'm actually thinking of protecting and just going for a Hurricane here. Okay, Ursa Luna just protects. So the upside here is I do have Aqua Jet, right? Which is going to be really good into both Pokemon. Okay. Man, they just Heat Wave. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, Pelipper takes basically no damage from that. We dodge it. This next turn is really interesting because I can actually Wide Guard to punish Heat Wave. But with two turns of Trick Room left, what I can do now is just protect Pelipper, sacrifice this. Yeah, like Sucker Punch into you, protect. Sucker Punch into you, protect. Just double check the boards, I didn't think things through. Two turns of Trick Room. So then I just bring out Basque Legion. Yeah. I honestly think my opponent bringing Heatran was a huge advantage for me here. So, yeah, I think we'll play the Sucker Punch here, protect here, bring out Basket Legion, then protect Basket Legion. We'll successfully have stalled out Trick Room. And this is one of Ursa Luna's main pitfalls, right? Like, the fact that I had to protect for a turn under Trick Room is really not ideal for it. I also just straight up crit Sucker Punch there, so I think that might just end the game, honestly. So, lucky crit. I don't think I needed it, because I was actually able to stall out Trick Room, or almost stall out Trick Room. And here, they didn't go for Heat Wave, so Wide Guard would have been completely useless, and they would have gotten a double knockout, and that's one way to lose this game. When we think about this battle, they haven't teared anything yet, so either of these tearings certainly makes sense. But with this being the last turn of Trick Room, it's really safe to just bring out Basque Legion now, and then protect Basque Legion. Like, that was a lucky crit. I actually don't really think it changes too much, but we'll see. Of course, one thing it does do is potentially tilt my opponent, and so the mental factor of that certainly can't be understated. But yeah, I'm just going to protect now. And then Hurricane and sacrifice Pelipper. Having the Dam proc here means we get a couple of extra turns of rain, which is exactly what we need to secure this endgame. So they're finally going to Terra here. You would expect it to be Heatran, right? Grass Terra? Okay. Yeah, I mean, this game is actually certainly not over yet. If they have Terra Blast on Heatran. There's Facade. Probably faints. Okay, they do. Basically, I don't know if I want to rely on hitting Gunk Shot to win the battle. Neither Pokemon protected, so clicking Self-Destruct here is incredibly risky. For example, you could protect and just Earthquake right now, or Facade. I don't honestly think Terra Blast even gets the KO here, quite frankly. Like, I could just Aqua Jet Gunk Shot. My fear is I miss, and they actually get a one-hit knockout onto my Pokemon here. Because, like, otherwise I could read into Ursa Luna Protecti and then just double up onto Heatran. Yeah, I don't know. It's, like, an 80% chance to just win the game outright here. I don't know my Heatran Calc, so... Yeah, they do Protect, so... I could have just gone like Liquidation plus Last Respects into Heatran, but I was really worried about doubling up here and losing off just my opponent making a good prediction. But we do hit Choice Band Gunk Shot. Okay, nice. <laughs> it is so weird to be using a Poison type attack onto Heatran, but basically in this endgame, I was like, look, 80% of the time in which Gunk Shot hits, I just win even in the worst case scenario. And should they just attack with the... Ursa Luna, I just get the knockout there, right? Like, the one thing we didn't want to do was double up on a Heatran, have Heatran protect, and then Ursa Luna gets a free knockout, because then that's a way to actually just straight up lose the game. 
right? So this was a really scary battle, but in the end, I think even though they set up Trick Room, I think the turn let Rillaboom went for knockoff. If the Rillaboom just switched out into Heatran there, my opponent would have been in a much better position because then they would have had a uh, Rillaboom for the late game and Heatran would have taken Ice Spinner really well there. So yeah, it's interesting because we went up against multiple Heatrans today. This one was a little bit scary because it had Grass Terra, but the thing is we were actually able to stall out Trick Room. So this game highlights why Ursa Luna can be a little bit difficult to use. Like my opponent got Trick Room up, but they only really got one really powerful attack off with Ursa Luna at the end of the day, right? So it's like, what else is uh, are you going to do if you like get it out under Trick Room and you can't get more than one knockout with it? So we actually ended up facing three Trick Room teams today. Trick Room is pretty scary for this team, but we were able to weather the storm and beat all three, which feels good. But I think my Pokemon selection overall was pretty decent. And I also think I got fortunate in the fact that like this opponent as well as the previous one brought Heatran into the matchup, which made things easier as well. So yeah. And one thing is that this team has so much priority, right? So even if Trick Room goes up, at least we pressure with like Choice Man Aqua Jet from the Overquill, Aqua Jet from Basque Legion, the Sucker Punch from Champau, as well as Extreme Speed from Dragonite. So yeah. All right, I decided I want to play one more game, so we get a nice long episode here today, and this is interesting. They've got Thunderous Fairy and Garganackle, as well as Wo Chien. Another Heatran. Okay. So they do have a couple of things that resist water, especially if it's Water Urshifu. I haven't really brought out Champower Dragonite today. I do think... Dragonite's interesting. Honestly, this is going to be a fascinating matchup because I think, like, Wo Chan be able to decrease our damage output is a really big deal since this team is so, so physical. So, I, I'm eager to see how this plays out. I think Chan Pao is a must bring for the defense drop and for the damage it out, um, output that it provides. Not really sure about Overquill in this one. I think it's difficult to see a position where I get Explosion off easily given Wo Chan, Heatran, and Garganackle. But, I do think Gunk Shot is not bad. Okay, I think I want to go just Champau Dragonite here, Pelipper Basque Legion. I think one thing that's really powerful in this game in particular is late game Basque Legion, just being able to last respects everything. So, let's give this a shot. I'm pretty scared about this matchup, though, and I feel like the one thing that can really cause this team trouble is if you are able to actually, like, survive all these physical attacks. That's not the only thing. When I said one thing, I guess that made it sound like there was only one thing that gives this team trouble, but, like, that's definitely one of my primary concerns. So it's Thunders and Wochian. Huh... I think Wochan going for Terra. Like, either of these Pokemon can Terra right now, right? I'm not sure I want to commit my Terra here quite yet, but, like, what I really. What else would I Terra is the question. I could just click Outrage on turn one, but I really don't like that so early on. I think if I'm my opponent, I Terra Thunderous and protect Wo Chien on turn one. I'm actually just going to protect Extreme Speed here. I want to see who Terra is on turn one, but I don't want to commit my Terra to Dragonite this early on either. That being said, I honestly think it may have just been worth it to Terra. Okay, it's going to be Wo Chien tearing into Fire. Honestly, not the worst Terra type to run into, because now it means I can just hit you with super effective damage from Basket Legion. See if Thunderous protects here. Interesting, it doesn't. That did an obscene amount. Oh my goodness. If I went normal Terra there, that may have just KO'd. Wow. Anyway, good Volt Switch and a Dragonite. If they had targeted Champau, I think I'd be in a stronger position, but. I mean, honestly, I think we position ourselves. That's a great play by my opponent. Really nicely done. Um, we position ourselves up for a late game Basque Legion sweep right now is what I'm going for, right? So like, this can start salt curing. I think this protecting certainly makes sense.
I'm down to just Sacred Sword Outrage here, I think. No Protect, okay. Nice, Outrage actually goes into the Garganacle. That doesn't even KO? Holy moly, that's bad. I thought that definitely would get... Uh, we're not Choice Banded, that's why. Yeah. Oh boy, did they Soul Cure Jim Pao as well? That is such a good play on their end. Nicely done. At least it's Citrus on Garg. So you don't get like the consistent leftovers recovery, but a single recover from that is going to be a disaster for me. Sacred Sword into this is super duper obvious. But I think I go for it because if I protect and they recover, it's a nightmare for me. Yeah, it's like their protect is so obvious, but if I let them get a recover off, it's even worse for me. So I might as well force them to at least protect. Uh, we're lucky with the outrage target here. Goes into Wo Chien. It's really good damage. I'm gonna foul play here. Okay, so we faint from Leaf Seed plus everything, but that's fine. We've seen Foul Play. We've seen Leech Seed on Wo Chien. That's basically it. It's pretty easy to bring out Basket Legion now. I guess I like Water Terra Basket Legion to take less damage from Foul Play, right? Yeah. Like, it's so tempting to just KO this, but like, Wo Chan protecting here feels like a possibility. And given that this had just protected, it's safer to target. But like... Well, actually, Dragonite's Outrage goes off first anyway, right? Oh no, it doesn't. It's slower. Um, so we Water Terra, wa Wave Crash. I think I have to just target Garg here. I don't know. There's a world here where they didn't protect Wo Chan, and then I just wave crash KO that, outrage KOs Garganak, and win the game off that. So maybe I should have just taken that risk this turn. Let's see. Okay. Good. That is very good for us then. I think now what I'm going to do is just leverage the fact that, like, Wo Chan doesn't do that much damage. I mean, frankly, I can just switch Dragonite out into Pelipper next turn, and then just Wave Crash into Wo Chan. My main question is, what is their final Pokemon? Let's see. Okay... If this were Water Terra Wo Chan, I think this would have been such a bad matchup. So we're lucky at least it's Fire Terra. And that we baited it out early with Chien Pao. Bring out their Dragonite. Uh, can't say I'm the biggest fan of seeing that. Like, I want to just go for a Wave Crash here and then switch out into a Pelipper. <sighs> yeah, Dragonite being their final one is a really strong pick. And with me, having gone for Water Terra, it means they can actually Extreme Speed me, but at least it shouldn't do as much damage. Oh, they E-Speed into my Dragonite. That is a really good turn. That actually might just win me the game. Because this should KO. And then now I just Aqua Jet Thunderous Tailwind. Right? Do I need a Tailwind? The reason a Tailwind is to ensure my Dragonite outpaces theirs and gets an E-Speed off before they can KO me. Yeah, I think Aqua Jet plus Tailwind here is pretty safe. Unless E-Speed KOs Basket Legion. It honestly might. Actually, this isn't a done deal by any means. It's going to be really close. 
Because their Dragonite might be able to 1v3 me in this endgame. I think Basculesion should survive here, but I'm not sure. I guess Thunderous could just protect here too, but it, it like went for Volt Switch on turn one. Yeah, I didn't expect it to have protect here. They didn't E-Speed with Dragonite either. Interesting. Because E-Speed's higher priority than Aqua Jet. So what did you go for? Aerial Ace? Your own Outrage? Uh, given that they went for Aerial Ace, I might actually still lose this then. It is going to be so close. Mainly this multi skill. So, like, I can use extreme speed to break through. I also wonder if it was correct to just stay in with Dragonite earlier than extreme speed. Hurricane. Oh, that did nothing. And it's Rocky. It's a bulky Rocky Helmet Dragonite. That makes so much sense. Oh, that's brilliant. How much does Hurricane do? It's so close. It is so close. They didn't E speed. We Hurricane. Oh, Pelipper got it. Nice. I wasn't sure if that was going to be enough. It looked like it may have been a couple of damage rolls there in the end. But this team is so good. Wow. I mean, we went undefeated, what, like 6 0? So that felt good. But. That was a really scary matchup. And I think if Wo Chiang was Water Terra instead of Fire Terra, I just lose this game. Because I think in order to beat Water Terra Wo Chien, I needed to get the game state to a point where everything around Basque Legion faints, and then I just lost respects. But if I get to that point, then it means that I don't have enough resources to beat the Dragonite. So that was, I think, a really tough matchup. It ended up working out okay because they were Fire Terra, which was probably the best Terra for us to run into on Wo Chien. But yeah, if that was like a Grass Terra or a Water Terra, I think this game would be infinitely harder. And it was already diff difficult enough as is. And I wasn't sure if Hurricane was going to get the KO there in the end. So yeah, that was super, super close. But what a fun series of games. This team is honestly incredible. And it's just so fun to play with these brand new Pokemon as well. So yeah, if you're looking for fast-paced offense, this is definitely it. We didn't get to feature all of the techs on the team, like Dragonite with the Dragon Tail is an interesting solution to some of the Trick Room comps, for example, and then Urshifu, obviously, we didn't bring out in this uh, course of the 6 plus games, but yeah, I think Urshifu just didn't really make too much sense in most of the games. I think like where Urshifu is really strong is if you just go Pelipper Urshifu, your opponent doesn't have great speed control or Urshifu answers, and then you just surging strikes everything, but in this set of games, I felt like both Basculeja and Overquill were often stronger picks, so yeah. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. So thanks so much as always for joining me. If you enjoyed, I'd really appreciate if you leave a like on the video or subscribe to the channel. It really helps out a ton and I'll see you all next time. All right. Peace.